We've acquired now over 500,000 customers. Almost every single one of those has been in person. We do comprehensive product and feature testing for operators as well as service providers in the space. And we do enormous amounts of consumer analysis studies. We believe that the operators that will ultimately win out will be the ones that listen to their customers and build products that their customers are actually demanding. Um, and we believe that if they do that, those customers will remain loyal um, more so than they are today. And, and today they're not they're not very loyal at all. I think offline you'll have to explain to me for the thousandth time how uh, Ron Robin betting works. Let's look and figure it out. <laughs> well, you can go to bettinghair.com right now. There's a help center at bettinghair.com. I pick Ron Robin and you'll find the content needs. All right, I'll start there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports Betting Conversations. Uh, today we're joined by Jay Ma, president and co-founder at Betting Hero. Uh, Jay, thanks for being on our podcast today. Uh, please tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, so my name is Jay Moore. I founded Betting Hero back in 2018, uh, along with my co-founder Jeremy Jackery. Um, uh, let's see, sports betting for us was never an industry that 10 years ago we thought we would be in. Uh, we both came from recruiting and sales. Uh, by way of background, Jeremy was employee number 24 at Glassdoor.com. I ran an executive search practice and then worked for a company called Gartner thereafter. Uh, but we saw a massive opportunity in sports betting with the repeal of PASPA. We ran an online affiliate business in financial services back in 2014-15. And we were really on the lookout for that next wave of customer acquisition opportunity to build a similar business within another vertical or another industry. Obviously, sports betting and, and iGaming was that for us. Uh, and we looked at the marketplace and decided that the typical online digital affiliate business, such as uh, Katina Media, Better Collective, Gambling.com Group, these household names in our industry, uh, was really not the place we were going to have the, the biggest impact on the space. Instead, we decided to pivot and play to our strengths, which, like I mentioned, were recruiting and sales. And that led us down a path of creating the first uh, street team uh, offline affiliate within the industry. Actually, we founded the company originally with the name Sports Betting Street Team. We needed to make what we did super simple. Uh, one, because we needed to educate our customers, the uh, the operators, on what it is that we did, but also we needed to be able to tell the story uh, to obviously people that we would partner with as well. Over the years that have passed, uh, we've obviously rebranded to Betting Hero uh, with a slightly more consumer-facing brand as well, uh, and developed ourselves as as really being known as the number one in-person activ activation company in the space. We've acquired now over 500,000 customers. Almost every single one of those has been in person between a betting hero and a customer, whether that's in a casino, a sports book, a, an arena, a venue, at a sports bar, at a tailgate. Anywhere sports fans, sports bettors, I guess, you know, uh, players may be, you'll probably find a betting hero along the way. Uh, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, operators started coming to us and recognizing the value that we had to offer outside of just customer acquisition, but also customer insights and data and uh, product feedback. We use these products oftentimes more than the operators themselves, even the product teams, especially in the wild. Uh, we also speak to more customers than probably anybody else in the space. So operators wanted to tap into the intelligence that we've gathered over these years through these millions of customer interactions. Um, we built what we affectionately refer to as betting hero research, which is exactly that. We do comprehensive product and feature testing for operators as well as service providers in the space. And we do enormous amounts of consumer analysis studies on behalf of operators, on behalf of ourselves, even on behalf of, uh, of the industry as a whole. And really the design there is let's grow the pie together. Let's grow the pie of this industry by better understanding consumers, their likes, their dislikes, their frustrations, the things that they want to see in products. Uh, and these customers want to be involved in the product development from an operator standpoint as well. Uh, the, the more recent and the third leg, I should say, to the stool that we're building is what we are now referring to as betting here at digital. This is our play on the traditional digital affiliate um, opportunity. Obviously, that's via bettinghero.com. We'll be launching uh, an app 
uh, later this year, if all goes to plan. Uh, but really, all of our digital efforts are centered on the consumer, which we believe is a miss at the moment. Most digital affiliate businesses focus on creating uh, high SEO-driven uh, content that drives, obviously, consumers to click out and register and, and, and play with these operators. But they don't do an enormous amount to develop relationships, long-standing relationships with customers to, again, to grow that pie, to focus on more than just customer acquisition, but also retention and development. And if we had to uh, bucket Betting Hero somewhere within this ecosystem, there are three things that we, uh, that, we ex that we are the experts in. And there are three things that we specialize in, and those are customer acquisition, customer retention, customer development. So that's how we are now thinking about ourselves, which is the leading customer acquisition, retention, and development company in the space. Yeah, that's very interesting, like the approach you took, because uh, I'm sure, as you well know, I mean, there are plenty of uh, companies out there in the affiliate space, but it's more transactional, right? I think it yeah. sounds like you take it to a more personal level, and um, I might be totally wrong here, but um, those types of relationships will probably breed like longer term clients, right, for specific sports books and of yours as well they, they might look at you kind of as a trusted advisor you know in, in the space just because you have that personal connection instead of just like plopping something on somebody's website and the click-throughs and so forth so that's it. yeah yeah I, I think you're absolutely spot on um to be honest the the transactional nature of this industry is not uncommon when you think about an affiliate's role in any industry they typically are transactional but there are some unique examples of affiliate businesses that don't have a transactional relationship with most customers. The, the easiest ones to point to would be, uh, would be travel. And if you think about a company like Expedia, not many people think about Expedia as an affiliate, but it's exactly what they are. They are an affiliate. They partner with travel companies, airlines, hotel companies, um, but they are a gateway for the consumer to make the right decision, to make the best decision for them, whatever that decision may be. And they also offer the ability for customers to have a relationship with them, right? You create an Expedia account, you have the Expedia app. Expedia is, uh, is the company that you maybe go to first. That's where you begin your travel. And then obviously you end up flying with Delta or United and staying at Hilton or, or Marriott. And in the affiliate space, there are some companies that have gotten close to that. Um, but again, they focus more so on a transactional um, relationship with the customer because the CPAs are, 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 are what they are. It's hard to deny uh, the, the opportunity to go after those CPAs. Um, but we're trying to think about things slightly differently in that five or 10 years from now, we believe that the CPAs in the space will subside to a level that can't sustain an acquisition only model. Um, but also what we know because of the research that we've done with consumers is that these consumers yet uh, uh, don't yet have loyalty to operators. So whereas I am a Delta customer, proud, uh, buy directly from Delta, same with Marriott. I'm loyal to Delta and Marriott. Expedia for me is less valuable than maybe for somebody else. We believe that we will work towards a more loyal customer base for certain operators. We believe that the operators that will ultimately win out will be the ones that listen to their customers and build products that their customers are actually demanding. Um, and we believe that if they do that, those customers will remain loyal um, more so than they are today. And, and today, they're not, they're not very loyal at all. So if we can develop a relationship with those customers that's beyond just transactional, we believe that we'll be set up in a much better position, again, five or 10 years from now, to be fully integrated with uh, the consumer experience when it comes to betting, but also with the operators themselves, a, a trusted partner beyond just, can you bring me another 10,000 customers this year? Um, the focus is, is much greater than that. It's about, like I said, it's about growing the pie and, and helping the operators better retain their customers, helping them better develop those customers, honestly, helping them better educate those customers, which is another massive issue in the space. Yeah, because 50 of your customers could equal to 10,000 of just the, you know, transactional type of signals. Well, I, 
I, I actually, I, I mean, look, the, the customers and, and the value and the, and the loyalty over time is certainly one aspect. But even before we get there, we need the customers to actually be able to get through the journey of signing up for these accounts. It's not right. easy. About 50% mm -hmm. of customers today, and we're, still, and we're now five, six years into this, even now, 50% of customers are going to run into an issue when registering funding and betting for the first time with a new operator. They're going to run into an issue that prevents them from actually betting, whether that's a KYC flag or issue uh, or a funding issue because their bank doesn't accept payment or, uh, you know, even when they're actually in the betting experience, let's say that they are able to register and fund. Then if there's not education done, the customer might not be able to find the bet that they're ultimately looking to place. So there could be a technical issue with the app, a connectivity issue, and or a geolocation issue that prevents them from betting. And obviously what we know based on the research conducted is that when that happens, those customers don't tell the operator, uh, hey, I've got an issue with KYC or I've got an issue with payment. Can you help me? Because this is a commodity at the moment. They just go to the, ne they just go next door. They go from blue to green or from green to blue uh, mm -hmm. or, or pick a color from one of these operators. And, and that is how they solve these issues. They, uh, they abandon it and they, and they move on to another operator. And if they run into an issue with that operator, then they move on again. Um, this isn't like Uber and Lyft where we have essentially a duopoly. Uh, in many of these states, for example, in Colorado, there's 20 plus operators. There's plenty of choice for, for customers uh, and they're going to they're gonna probably bounce around if they're not having the experience that they expect. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like the growth from <clears throat> street team to Expedia. You know, like that real from a personal approach where, you know, kind of, you know, one on one, how like as you grow into the, you know, the digital space. Right. You know, and how do you keep that personal touch and what what you know, we, we come from a technology company. Right. And we look at it through everything through a technology filter. So when you're when you're looking at becoming this i love the i love the expedia analogy because it really did change the travel business right and you can see when i go on your site it's like oh wow that's cool oh fanduel has a bet you know this how are you going to keep that personal concierge type touch and still scale you know yeah and what great, technology is going to power that yeah it's a great question the first thing i would say is that we've we've been here and done this before um okay. now not necessarily with the technology angle but we were asked these same questions five six years ago when we were building um, the street team version of our business, the offline version right. of our business, how are you going to scale this? There's no way you can scale this. Sure, you can put a team in, in New Jersey and they can have success, but there's no way you can manage a team in New Jersey, a team in uh, Nevada, one in Colorado, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all over the place. It, it won't scale. Um, and what we found is that, yes, it will, uh, because the consumers want it to scale. The consumers need the support. And that's really our driving uh, force. That's the, the North Star, if you like, is the, the North Star that we're following is the consumer. What does the consumer need? What does the consumer want? Um, and that's how we believe that we will scale. How do we keep that personalized touch? We've got a number of, uh, a number of uh, plans in order to do that. The first is, though, the millions and millions of customer interactions that we've had over the last five or six years. I'm confident in saying this. Nobody in sports betting knows the customer like we do. Nobody has spoken to as many Sports bettors and I see no customers as betting hero has. So already we're at, we're at an advantage in that we know how these consumers think. We know the challenges that they face. We know the the information they're looking for. We know the education that they're yearning for, and we know that the uh, the delivery mechanism for them getting the, those pieces of information right now is um, I wouldn't say broken, but not developed to the level that the consumers expect. So then, how do you take that opportunity and then parlay it or a pass it, I suppose, into a into a digital strategy. Our plan is not to be digital only, um, because we believe that that that's um, that's how we got here. Uh, is a, is a digital only strategy. We're going to have a hybrid approach to our consumer relationships, much like an Expedia would, for example. Uh, in that, yes, there is a digital experience, a self serve experience that consumers can take advantage of to make their selections, to compare odds to compare promotions, to compare sports books or, 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 or uh, casino operators online, but then also being powered by, one, the massive amounts of intelligence that we've gathered over the last five or six years to make these informed decisions. So, for example, if a customer comes to Betting Hero, either bettinghero.com or, or, or the app in the future, 
with an issue that they've ran into. For example, how do I link my PayPal account to, to X operator? Um, they can self-serve that information because we've got the frequently asked the, the answers to the frequently asked questions available in our content library. But in addition, if they need an additional question, for example, how do I link my PayPal? Uh, okay, I tried to do that, it didn't work. Why is that? Where do they then go? Really, the options are go to customer service at an operator specifically, probably get stuck in some sort of customer service queue because they're understaffed based on based on our experiences, or they can go to their in our world, they're betting here a VIP manager. So we will have VIP managers associated with our customers that customers can reach out to for any needs to do with sports betting. Hey, I'm having trouble linking my banking account to, to an operator or uh, you know, I'm getting a, a geolocation error when I try to play on this specific operator. I live in New Jersey, I'm in the New Jersey app. Why is this? We know the answers to these questions. We know how to troubleshoot these issues and then resolve them. Or even, you know, take it a step further. I want to place a bet on, you know, the final four matchups uh, of, of March Madness. Uh, I know this is going out in a few weeks, but that, that's coming up here this weekend. I want to bet on on this specific matchup. Um, but to be honest, I don't bet often. I don't really know what these numbers mean. What is an over under? What is a money line? What is this spread? What do these points mean? What is a plus one ten? What's a minus one ten? Having a resource where you can in a controlled and, and, and safe environment, ask those questions and not be ridiculed or, um, or or made to feel stupid by asking those questions. That's the type of environment we're looking to create. And you you said it best, it's a, it's a concierge level approach, not only for the true VIPs, the VIP VIP, but for the masses, for every customer. Because in our mind, every customer is a VIP, every customer is valuable enough to the operators, but also to the ecosystem to take the time to educate them and then help them through these issues. So from a digital perspective, it's about creating really nice, uh, easy to consume content that self-serve if needed um, for, for, for the majority of customers, but then also to power that with our team of experts, which is now four, 500 strong across the country to be able to actually guide these customers through these decision-making trees uh, so that they can in, in, in enjoy their experience betting on mobile. I mean, that is, that's our mission. It's been our mission since the very beginning. We didn't know it was going to play so well into this hybrid model, this omni-channel model that we're now working towards, but our mission has remained the same. We help people enjoy their experience betting with mobile, uh, and that's what we want to try and accomplish. Yes, yeah, speaking of questions, I think offline you'll have to, Explain to me for the thousandth time how uh, Ron Robin betting works. That's like can't figure it out. <laughs> well, you can go to bettinghair.com right now. There's a help center at bettinghair.com. I pick Ron Robin and you'll find it something. All right, I'll start Thank there. You. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so can you, can you help me win bets? I can't. Uh, well, well see, and, this, and, this is, and this is one thing I think that. How many times do you, know, you get that question? Yeah, we get that question a lot, uh, and we don't provide betting advice, so we never have, we never will. Um, betting <laughs> advice, it, that's not that's not who we are. But right, right. what we are here to do is is again help customers enjoy their experience. We believe that betting right. uh, for the majority of of, of people, uh, and we believe that it should remain this way, is, is entertainment. Right? It's enhancing the experience mm -hmm. that you have when watching a game, uh, or when you're at home, or with your friends at a bar, whatever that may be. It's about the entertainment. We're not looking for customers, and we don't believe that this is the right thing to do, a responsible thing to do. And we know that RG is obviously a big topic right now. We don't believe that the right thing to do is, is to help customers find additional dollars to spend uh, on gambling specifically. I'm not sure that that's sustainable. And also, I don't necessarily think it's ethically right. Um, however, most customers, in fact, most people, population, have entertainment dollars, whether they budget strictly or not, they have entertainment dollars that they use for sports, for entertainment, um, you know, going to the movie theater, going to the casino, whatever that may be. That's the the that's the opportunity, in our opinion, and, and the ethical responsibility that we have is to help people make more informed, better educated decisions based on their based on their entertainment budget. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you touched upon um you know, how you, you've gone from, um, you know, more of a you know, personal, uh, uh, 
I guess, uh, personal approach to slowly getting into uh, technology enablement and having that the technology kind of take you to the to the next level. Um, how did you, I guess, go go about figuring out like what the right technology was and how much is too much and what what's not enough? Because it sounds like like some of the like newer, I would say, newer people to gaming might not be the most savvy at technology either. Um, and probably we're le leaning more towards a bit of a older crowd. Is, um, and this is just just my guess. Uh, people who are not like on, you know, they, they know Facebook and Instagram, but once you get like all these like different statistics, like you said, thrown at you, like, you know, money lines and point spreads and um, over-unders. Um, so how, how did you think about technology or make decisions on technology to, to make sure that the um, transition or the attraction would be the same at, um, in person as, as the online experience? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and honestly, it's one that we've experienced quite literally firsthand um, countless times. I mean, hundreds of thousands of times. We deal with uh, and help every type of customer that you can imagine, right? Mm -hmm. The... The, 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 let's call it traditionally more techni technologically advanced individual that's grown up around technology, that's accustomed to using mobile apps in their day-to-day -day life, that's comfortable with funding money in, money out in, in all manner of technology products. And then the, com the converse of that, uh, which is a customer that, you know, they don't even know their Apple ID password. Uh, they don't know even how to download, download an app. We've seen it. We've seen it all. And we've helped... We've helped all of those customers through those challenges. So the best answer I can give you in terms of the decisions that we make around technology and, and what we want to build and why we want to build it is, is probably going to be a little different than most technology companies that you might talk to, uh, certainly different than most technology companies that I talk to in the space. And that is that we are going to build our digital products based on the consumer. Uh, we're going to listen to the consumer and, and build our experiences um, based on, on what it is that they're looking for, based on what it is that they're not getting today. Um, and this is one of the, I don't want to say fatal errors um, that people may make because I, I don't think anything is ultimately fatal based on just technology. There's always ways that you can adapt things to, to meet the consumer demand. However, I don't see an enormous amount of consumer um, research done in this space when it comes to product development. Fortunately for us, we have an in-house uh, research division that focuses on just this, product and feature testing for operators and suppliers in the space, as well as consumer research based on um, speaking to quite literally tens of thousands of, of sports betters and I casino customers. So we have a very unique opportunity to learn from the customer themselves about what they like and dislike about their betting experience today uh, maybe why that they have tried to bet online and then gone away and not done it again because it wasn't a seamless experience. Uh, maybe it's about information that they're, that they're seeking and that they can't find. Um, or it's that, yes, they're comfortable with the technology and betting online, but they still want to have that human touch. They still want to have that interaction point so that if they're unsure about a decision they're going to make or if they're unsure about uh, you know, what funding method, for example, makes the most sense for them? Am I going to get a charge back to my credit card? Is this, you know, is this something that is, let's call it legal and above board? We used to get those questions a lot of times five years ago, and in new states, we'll still get them. Uh, so being able to educate those customers is also really important. So, yeah, from our standpoint, digital experience is only as good as the consumers want it to be uh, and only as good as the consumers engage with it. So we focus a lot on retention. We focus a lot on that consumer feedback component. I mentioned this offline, but I'll say it again. I came across a video uh, within the last week of, and it was uh, an old video of Steve Jobs uh, back in 1997. He was speaking to uh, the Apple development teams at a, at a summit. They were $1.6 billion company at the time. And he got accosted by one of the employees, basically claiming that he knew nothing about technology and that the technology could be so much better. They could build these products in such a better fashion based on technology. 
And his response was long-winded, but I'll summarize it for you. It was essentially, we're going to listen to the customer. We're going to build products that the customers want, and we're going to then work backwards from that point to the technology. Let's build customers, that, uh, build uh, products that the consumers want and work backwards to the technology. And look, if it's good enough for Apple, uh, it's good enough for most of us. Again, they were a $1.6 billion company in 1997. They're now a $2.6 trillion company. It's worked pretty well for them. Uh, so I'm not saying that we're going to be a $2.6 trillion company, of course. Uh, look, uh, I don't even know if we'll ever get to be a $1.6 billion company. However, the concepts are the same. Listen to the customer, work, back, work backwards from there, build the technology around what the customer is looking for. If you do that, you will retain customers. Well, firstly, you'll attract customers in a much easier way, much more efficiently. Secondly, you'll retain and then be able to develop those customers uh, as well. And, and, and that's, in my opinion, the holy grail in this space is if you can, everyone can acquire customers in, in sports betting. It's not, it's not that difficult, right? Promotions, offers, incentives, good marketing might cost a lot of money, but it's not impossible. Retaining and, and developing those players over time, that's much harder to do. And typically it takes more than just marketing dollars or money to be able to do that. You have to have really intuitive products, great customer experiences, and also all of the other things that go around with that. Um, I, uh, you know, you've got to have a product that works all the time. Uh, you've got to have access to all of the available markets that a customer might be interested in. You've also got to have fantastic customer service or a VIP support system uh, to be able to make sure that you have a one-to-one -one relationship with your customer. And, and that's what we believe is missing in the space today. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, everything that <clears throat> Kevin and I have heard over the past several years, I mean, no one has discussed this topic at such depth, you know, as you have and and is focused on it as, as, as betting hero is. So I mean, that, that's great to yeah. hear. Uh, there's a lot and of across value. platforms too. Like yeah. they, again, going, you know, looking at that holistic view and, and helping the consumer through cross platform decisions too. A lot of people, a lot of the retention has just been about <clears throat> working with, you know, FanDuel specifically, but I like your approach across, you know. Yeah. Look, I mean, at an operator level, I, I understand it for sure. And operators right. do a great job of retaining their most valuable players. Right. Typically they have really well built out VIP teams internally. Um, but what about what about everybody else, right? That's the one percent. Mm -hmm. What about what the about 99? That in volume Joe consumer. Exactly. And it's those consumers that ultimately are going to make sure that this industry uh, survives, thrives, or or doesn't. Um, yeah, the VIPs are the are the are the revenue, they're the they're the profit necessarily. Um, but if if these operators were interested in just building a sports book or a casino platform for just the VIP, then they would have done that, right? They would have just built a product that was a, a black box and you had to have a membership card to get in and nobody else could join. They didn't do that because this is a product for the masses. This is entertainment. Um, we believe that there's, there's a lot that can be done uh, to develop those players over time. Maybe they become the VIP next. Maybe they're spreading their play across four or five operators today and they are a VIP but they're not pooling their money for whatever reason. Um, can we help make, uh, can we help those individuals make, make, make better decisions, make more educated decisions? Yeah. Uh, I think, I think it's better for everyone in the industry. Um, you know, the, the sports books and, you know, most importantly, the consumers um, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so in uh, wrapping things up, like what we typically ask at the end is like, what do you see kind of the next several years in the industry? Adding, uh, what are what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I, I, I'm biased here. Uh, I believe it. I believe it's 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 heading in the direction of travel in which we're going. Um, but that's not because we're going in this direction of travel and we're going to pull everyone else along with us. We believe that we've seen some key indicators in the space um, that have uh, encouraged us to go down this path. And maybe we're ahead of uh, some of the competitors, but. We don't believe that that's going to be the case for very long. And I've alluded to some of those things, but in our opinion, it is about retention and development of players. It's about creating experiences for players, uh, betters, sports betters, and I've seen our players that they don't have today, creating relationships with those customers that they don't have today. So that this feels more than just a transactional um, experience for most. Uh, this feels more than just a, 
uh, a, uh, an exercise of losing my money every single time I play. And if and if that is what happens, then um, we need to make sure that the consumers recognize the risks that are associated with sports betting. But also, again, keep in mind that, that this is about entertainment. Um, so that's where we believe the industry is going is towards a more uh, personalized industry ecosystem where betters have more choice, they have more information at their fingertips. Uh, they're able to um, they're able to rely on uh, unbiased third parties to be able to help them make informed decisions. And then also from the operator standpoint, we believe we'll see product development. We we think that we'll see innovation in the space. Um, we hope that it's because the consumers want it and not because uh, you know uh, operator in question is trying to keep up with their closest competitor. We don't believe that that's the best way to develop the industry and develop these products. Um, so overall, we think it's about moving away from a transactional acquisition only model um, in terms of acquiring new customers. Of course, that's always going to be a factor, but moving towards more of a retention model, uh, building strong relationships with customers, creating bespoke experiences for them that they otherwise can't get, and then making sure that their digital experience or their omni-channel experience uh, is at the level at which they uh, demand. And ultimately, if we're able to do those things, we're going to be able to develop a one much more valuable, uh, sustainable player over time. And in our opinion, and you mentioned it earlier, it's going to allow us to grow the pie overall. And that means focusing on underserved markets of customers today, for example, females, the older demographics, the younger demographics that may be a brand new to sports betting, uh, even though they may be technically advanced, uh, they, they might not know what these numbers mean, right? Or what this six pack of odds uh, means and how to make informed decisions. So it's really about giving the, the, the information back to the consumer and allowing them to make educated decisions and then in that in that uh, vision, we believe that the operators will win out based on their customer experiences based on, and that include is inclusive of product and technology. Um, but it's also inclusive of the the softer elements that right now maybe are not as high of a priority, for example, customer service, for example, personalization, uh, marketing, uh, but done in a in a slightly different way. And a betting hero, we want to sit right in between. Uh, those decision cycles where a customer meets an operator, where they begin their betting experience, we are working towards an effort where every single bet begins with betting hero. And if we can do that, we know that we'll be able to grow the pie for all of the operators um, in the space. And, and again, hopefully help create a more sustainable and healthy industry and ecosystem so that we don't have to face some of the issues that Europe and other markets are facing 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And actually, I think if things continue the way they are with no change, we'll hit those issues much sooner than that. We'll hit them probably in five or 10 years rather than 20 yeah. or 30 years because of the way that technology is advancing. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, yeah, you know, plus we had a head start here, you know, because Europe was really built, you know, with, with no significant, you know, precedent. And, and now, you know, in the U.S., like you said, that timeline will diminish significantly of <laughs> getting to yeah, uh, some of the issues that Europe is facing. Um, and we're seeing well, it already, right? We're seeing it already with uh, with the consolidation in the space that's happening today. Yeah. Um, how does a consolidation and an M and A across the operator landscape? How does that impact customer experience? I'm not sure that really anybody's asking that question or asking the op the customers themselves. How does that? You know how does that how does that affect your trust in operators in the future, right? If you were a um, just let's take one for example, points bet. Uh, if you were a points bet customer, are you now as trustworthy about what your betting experience looks like in the future, knowing that you had an account? Maybe this is where you, maybe you love points bet. Maybe points bet was everything for you, and and now it's been ripped away uh, for one reason or another. By the way, I think that deal was actually a good one. Um, but what does it do to the customer? And mm -hmm. at a single level, maybe it, maybe it doesn't make much of a difference, but once you extrapolate that out and you factor in customers from all these different smaller, let's call them tier two operators that are being acquired and, and going out of business, um, it impacts the overall customer experience. And then they feel in some cases forced in 
uh, to these larger operators that maybe don't care about them as much um, or their experience as much. And again, that's where we believe that a lot can be done in the industry to enhance the experience overall. And we think about this as more of an ecosystem than we do just an individual operator experience. It's a, you know, these most customers have three to five apps on their phone. They play with uh, at least two. And there's a reason that they do that, um, probably because the experience that they're, they're seeking doesn't yet exist to the level at which they would they would expect it to. Yeah, yeah, they're su- supplementing the experiences across multiple apps. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's been a good well, chat. Yeah, you know, yeah. Thank like, you like, so much like for- you, we, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. And we'll be, we like the when you start talking about the innovation chapter of sports betting because that's where Dan Art, we, you know, like you talk about you're going to sit there, we're going to be sitting right next to you because that's why we're we're in this business as the as the. Operators start changing. Hopefully, they're going to be calling on data art to help them move into the technology future. Uh, absolutely. And look, again, it, it, innovation is what customers want. Um, we speak a lot with operators about innovation, actually, within our research division, especially, you know, what are competitors doing? How can we keep up with them? What can we do to, to innovate faster than them or, or develop a product on our roadmap that or a feature on our roadmap that, that nobody else has? Um, and again, I'll share it. I'll share it. Maybe, maybe, in, uh, maybe I'm overagging the pudding here, but it, it it comes back to the consumer. Before you make any innovation, before you make any change, what does a consumer want? Um, and innovation is going to be critical for sure. If I if if somebody had to ask me today about what good innovation is, uh, this might sound counterintuitive, but in my opinion, good innovation at the moment is just making sure your product works all of the time. There isn't really a product today in the in the marketplace that works every single time. Um, You know, and if we think about the other digital products that we use day to day, and I travel a lot, so I use Uber and Lyft quite frequently. Lyft is where I go typically, Uber if I need to. If neither of those products worked, and and let's say 50% of the time if they didn't work, um, I would just use taxis. I'd go back to taxis. And that's the potential challenge that we face in this industry and when I talk about innovation, if there were an operator that just innovated in terms of their product stability and, and the working product every single time, every instance, every bet that was attempted to be placed went through, every registration that was attempted to be made was successful, every funding effort that was uh, attempted to be made was successful, that operator would win because at the moment it doesn't exist. Now, there are some that are better than others for sure, um, but it doesn't exist today where the apps work as designed every single time, every single instance. And in the other digital experiences that we all have, that's not an issue. So why is that? Um, is it because technology is not quite there? Is it because obviously these products are very complicated, a lot of input feeds from, from different providers? Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, however, if, if I was gonna focus on innovation, if I was in an operator, that's the innovation that I would seek first because I think it's being ignored by some and it's probably impacting the loyalty of their customers. Uh, and it's hard for them to know exactly why customers leave, uh, why customers don't come back or why they bet once and then go somewhere else. It's very difficult for an operator to understand why or, or even why they're losing people in the funnel, uh, the acquisition funnel, because they don't get that feedback. The customers are not going to you know, be unsuccessful in registering and then think, I'm going to do you know, this operator uh, a big favor here and let them know exactly what happened to me and share a screenshot and, and a screen recording so they can go and work on this bug and fix it. Um, no, they don't do that. They just go to a competitor. So yeah, innovation today and innovation in the future, I think are two very different things. Um, and it's going to be important. Uh, but again, I think it has to be in, informed by the consumer and, and ultimately. Yeah. So. yeah, agreed. Yeah. Well, this was excellent. Again, Jay, thanks so much for all of your time. Um, we yeah. look forward to hopefully having you back on again, maybe later on in the year. If you have any uh, <laughs> updates or yeah. your your innovation is, is progressing well, I hope. By your, next, uh, your next chapter, yeah. you're welcome back. Well, we'll, we're <laughs> gonna be that, well I, w- I would hopefully love to be, we'll be part of it. <laughs> yeah, I love. I uh, really appreciate the the opportunity to to come on and be able to participate. And and yeah, I would I would love to I would love to come back on as we are. You know, I mentioned this again offline, becoming a 
uh, almost refounding uh, as a company and becoming what Congrats. we want to what we want to be in the space. I, I'd love to come back on and, and and tell some of those more stories, and also be able to learn from my own advice, heed my own advice, let's say, because I'm sure that we'll make a lot of mistakes along the way as well. Um, but uh, sometimes it's good to get that reminder of remember why you're doing this, remember who you're doing this for, which which is ultimately the customer. So, yeah, I uh, really appreciate the time and, and for having me on. And, uh, happy to come back on whenever whenever you want me to. Yeah, we'll do. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Jay. All right. Thank you. Take Thanks. Care.